Well, good morning and God bless you. Thank you so much for logging on for our Sunday morning worship experience. And let me just say this, happy Resurrection Sunday. I am so excited to celebrate Resurrection Sunday right here on the World Wide Web um, with you this morning. And I'll be just transparent. This is very different for even me as the broadcaster and as the senior leader of the worship hall. For as long as I can remember, I have always celebrated Resurrection Sunday in the church. But let me say this, I believe that the same anointing, hallelujah, that is in the corporate setting, God is going to allow it this morning to be right here as we are safely on the World Wide Web. Go ahead and do me a favor. Simply let me know where you all are coming in from on this Sunday morning. I am so excited and I'm so grateful this morning that Jesus allowed himself and made a conscious decision to be our Passover lamb. And I am so grateful for that. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're doing. But don't allow the discouragement of not being in the physical building this morning um, stop you from celebrate, celebrating the fact that he got up. Hallelujah. Come on here. You can just put that on the screen. I am so grateful that he got up. I, this is not going to be no ordinary resurrection Sunday service. I can assure you that I'm going to move out of the way and allow Holy Spirit to do through me whatever it is that he wants to do. And so go ahead and let me know where you are coming in from this morning. I'm so excited if you can't tell it already. And it's a true joy and it's an authentic joy. I'm just so glad, hallelujah, that he did not leave me in the state I was in, that he did not allow the enemy, hallelujah, to take my mind, hallelujah, he didn't allow the enemy to take your mind either, and so I want you to do me this favor, go ahead and share, go ahead and invite, let me calm myself down, because I'm just so excited about what God is going to do on this Resurrection Sunday this morning. Go ahead and share it and invite. Go ahead and share it and invite. If you're on YouTube, God bless you and welcome to our Sunday worship experience. If you're on Facebook, we love you, welcome you as well. And even if you're on our portal, which can be accessed by going to www.marcusrivers.org and simply clicking watch online. Now, if you're on Facebook, I need you to do me a special favor this morning. I need you to share and invite. And let's do this. Can you do me this favor on Facebook especially? Can you ping in the chat three people who you know need this word of encouragement from the Lord this morning? And I promise you, it's gonna be an encouraging word. It may not be a long word, because I really want you to enjoy your families on this day, but I want you to do me that favor, especially on Facebook. Ping three people in the chat. I see some of you doing it already. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm so excited. So ping three people, share the broadcast out, especially from our public figure, um, the public worship room page, all right? If you're on uh, YouTube, you all have been doing amazing with subscribing and letting people know that we are on YouTube. We haven't been on there that long, and we got a couple hundred people of uh, people who have subscribed and simply want to say thank you. I want you all to hear this song. I want to worship right here. Go ahead and let me know where you're coming in from. Let's still do the best that we can on the World Wide Web to celebrate today, hallelujah, is our Resurrection Sunday, alright, so I want to play this song, and I want you to worship him in this moment, and somebody put hashtag redeem, hashtag redeem, hallelujah, and listen to these words, Lord, we thank you right here, God, hallelujah, Woo! come on, you've rescued my life, yeah, come on here, worship with me, Woo! come on, where are my worshipers at, Woo! and I'll never go Never going back. Yeah, come on. It's Sunday morning worship. Go ahead and share and invite. Come on here. We're in the worship room. I see you all. Woo. And I feel the power of the Holy Spirit even in here now. And I'm never going back. Yeah. Somebody shout never. Somebody shout never. Come on. You have rescued my life. Woo. Come on here. You have rescued my life. Come on, it wouldn't be the worship room if we didn't do no worship. I know it's Sunday, hallelujah. I know this is different, woo, but he still got up. This is still Resurrection Sunday, hallelujah. And I want you to clear your mind and clear your heart and enter into a hiding place, woo, as we 
we commemorate, as we remember, come on here, come on here, as we honor, hallelujah, serving a God who that got up, hallelujah, woo, I feel my help coming in the room, and so I want you to enjoy uh -huh, this resurrection experience, and no matter what you're going through, woo, I want you to understand that he is resurrecting every dead thing in your life. Somebody put in the chat box, it only looks dead. Woo. I feel an anointing right there. Put that in the chat box. It only looks dead. My, my, my shot. And for others of you, there are things that God is allowing you to walk away from because he's getting ready to revive, to reconstruct, come on here, and to restore some things in your life only so that he can redeem you. I said this this week and it bears repeating. He only resurrects a thing that he wants to redeem. Woo. Hallelujah. I want to play that song again because it seemed like I talked through most of it. But I want you to understand that he only resurrects a thing woo, that he wants to redeem. And I want you to hear this as encouragement this morning. I am redeemable. Woo, hallelujah. On this Resurrection Sunday, I want you to get that in your spirit. As you're sharing, as you're inviting, as you're commenting, as you're pinging friends, as you are there with your family, I pray you are with your family together. I want you to look at your son and look at your Jeremiah and Jordan. Sharita, come on. We are redeemable. There is power in that and there is hope in that statement. You are redeemable. On this Resurrection Sunday, I want you to understand that there is nothing that you have done so wrong that he will not receive you again, that he will not forgive you. And because of how he loves you, woo, and because of how he redeems you, you are stepping into a new place of purpose this morning. Oh my God, I feel good this morning. I feel good this morning. I know we are celebrating Resurrection Sunday a little bit differently, Evangelist Kim, but I still feel the power of the Holy Spirit, even on this Sunday morning. So I want you to look at your virtual neighbor. Don't slap nobody. You get in trouble slapping people. But look at your virtual neighbor, and if you can, just tag somebody and say, you are redeemable. Woo, God have mercy. You are redeemable. I'm going to move on right here. Hey, and while you're at it, we're going to take communion today. And so I want you all to go get a cracker, get you a cup of juice. We're going to take some communion this morning on this Resurrection Sunday. So go get you some crackers, get you some juice. And after we take up tithes this morning, we're going to write into communion. We're going to go into the Word. So go get your, your communion elements as we worship because we're going to do communion this morning. I didn't email you out, but I'm letting you know now. Get your elements for communion. What a beautiful day to take communion. What a beautiful day to take part in his suffering, resurrection, and burial this morning. All right? Let's worship right here. And We'll, and, and we'll move forward in our service. Come on. Somebody say he rescued me. Woo, come on. Somebody say he rescued me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that he rescued me. Yeah. This is Jubilee Worship. And the name of this song is called My Response. You have rescued me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have rescued me. Get your, get your communion elements, please. Just a cracker or a piece of bread and some juice. Come on here. It's symbolic. Oh, oh, oh. Come on here. My response. Pastor Erica, my response. Woo. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. Woo. Come on here. Put, put a worship right through here. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. What is your response on this Resurrection Sunday? Oh my God. Oh, you're my Redeemer. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, hey, hey, come on, listen to this. I feel this power in here now. Oh my God, come on, thank you for resurrecting us. I just want you to hear this song. This song has been on my spirit all week long and I want you to hear it. Oh, redeeming us. Hey, woo, where are my worshipers at? Come on, I need to see my worshipers put flames of fire on the screen. Where are my worshipers at this morning? Oh, hey, God, we bless you, Jesus. God, we love you, Jesus. God, we thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, he has rescued our lives this morning. I'm forever grateful. As I'm here at the worship room, I know you all are not here with me, 
Some of you wonder, where is he at? Come on here, I, don't, I ain't never seen that before. I'm here at the worship room. I couldn't stay away from the tabernacle this morning. So I'm here, and in a day real soon, we're gonna open up the doors and allow us in a safe way to worship together. But I had to be in the house of God myself, physically. I had to be here. I couldn't really break my tradition of not being in the house of God on these Sunday mornings and especially on Resurrection Sunday. Say that one more time. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Woo! I pray you feel my excitement this morning. I'm so glad uh, that he made a choice to get up for you and I, even while we were yet sinners. And we were not thinking about him. We were not paying him any attention. Come on here. He got up. Come on here. Come on here. Hallelujah. The death, burial, and resurrection. I am so grateful this morning. Hallelujah. Come on here. Woo. Every tither, I want you to begin to get ready to give your tithe this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to go right into tithing at this time. Let me move on because I can get stuck right here in this worship. I want every tither to prepare your tithe. Your tithe is 10% of your increase or your earnings for this particular week. Even if this is not your week to tithe, I want you to, if you've experienced increase, somebody just shout increase. Because sometimes God will give it to you just because you said it. Sometimes he'll honor what comes out of your mouth as a speaking spirit just because you said it. Come on here. I just want you to shout that wherever you are. If you're in the portal, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, I simply want you to shout that in your atmosphere. Shout increase. Woo! Shout increase so it can find you. Shout increase so favor can locate you. This morning, I encourage every tither. If you are a tithing right now, you belong to this ministry, or you don't belong to a ministry, and you simply say, I want to position myself to be a target for favor. When you tithe, and this is 10% of what God has allowed you to, to bring it to your house. When you tithe, here it is, you position yourself to be a target for the favor of God. I believe there's a favor, a new kind of favor, that is getting ready to come upon the tithers simply for this one reason. Not because they'll be cursed with a curse. Not because they'll be sick. Not because they'll drop dead. Come on here. All that witchcraft-like stuff that people say, if you don't tithe, you're going to be cursed. No. We, I simply, in the worship room, in our church, I simply encourage you to tithe because it's an honor and because you love God. That's all. No games, no gimmicks. I ain't twisting your arm. I've learned throughout my history of church. I've been in ministry now 15 years. Either you're going to tithe or you're not. And this morning, I want to encourage every person who wants to tithe into the worship room. I want you to go get your tithe together. Before you send it, we're going to do our offering confession right through here. I believe that when you tithe and when you give, you must speak and give your money in assignment, all right? I'm going to put our confession up. We're going to go right into our offering confession, and we'll go right into communion after this. All right, here it is. Today is the day of my supernatural debt cancellation. Today is the day that God brings me to my wealthy place. Somebody shout wealthy on the screen. Woo! Today is a day of my favor because God has anointed me for wealth and I'm ready to move in my position. Today I am a covenant commander of wealth. Today I hear his voice because I do not harden my heart. I am ready to sow today. I am ready to receive today. Today my heart is fixed trusting in the Lord. I will never be broke another day in my life because today God is my only provider of wealth. Money cometh to me now in the name of Jesus. Money coming to your house. Money coming to your children's house. Money coming to everything connected to you and everything around you this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Here it is. All money knows our names and it is seeking us out today. May wealth overtake us today because of us being money missionaries. I know or we know what to do with money and wealth today. Abundance, shout that on, on the screen. Healing, type that while you feel like it too. And prosperity, woo, come to our houses now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to give you about 60 seconds to put your seed in the ground, and we'll be right back with you, and we're going to go right into Holy Communion on this Resurrection Sunday. God bless you, and I'll see you in a few moments here.
Thank you all so much for your generosity. And I decree and declare that a blessing is getting ready to find your house now because you are a tither. Somebody simply put that on the screen because I am a tither. Excuse me, I thought I saw something over there. Maybe it was an angel coming in the room. Hallelujah. I prophesy that to you. <laughs> the angel will come into your atmosphere and it'll scare you. <laughs> but then you'll feel the peace of God. Don't y'all laugh too hard at me. <laughs> Look, it seemed like been doing this uh, online ministry so long you start seeing things all right and so that's just an indication that we are getting ready to open up the doors of the church <laughs> so that we can worship in the physical uh, in the physical uh, essence of church all right let's grab our communion elements <laughs> God we thank you God we bless you I prophesy <laughs> that angels will come to you wherever you are angels will visit you that angelic assistance will assist you in this season hallelujah <laughs> like never before in Jesus name come on you got to laugh doing this thing you got to laugh if, if you cannot laugh while you do it if you cannot have fun while you do it then don't do it no more hallelujah I was speaking to one of my spiritual children this week and I said when it's no longer fun I don't want no parts of it when it's no longer fun when your ministry assignment it's no longer fun when you cannot crack jokes. Come on here. When it takes years from your life, when you don't have the spirit of joy, hallelujah, you better stop doing it and find something that God wants you to do that'll bring you joy. Come on, let's go right into Holy Communion. Now, I, before, before everything hit, I went and got my communion element, so I got about a thousand of these cups to take communion. We're going to go right into communion. I believe that this is a day and a time where Holy Communion cannot be something that we've taken out of the ecclesia and, and out of the operations of the church. I want you to go grab your elements and we're gonna go right into communion. I'm gonna read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 22 through 28, all right? And I want you in this moment to search your heart. Search your heart, I'm gonna slow myself down. Sometimes I'm a fast talk and I'll be ready just to preach, but I wanna slow myself down. I want you on this Resurrection Sunday to search your heart. Set your heart. What is in your heart? Is there any unforgiveness? Come on here. Are there things you've been holding on to for years that God wants to resurrect so he can redeem you from that baggage and from that trauma? Hallelujah. Take a moment. Search your heart. How did you last talk to people that you love? Oh my God. How did you leave people that you love and you care about? I want you to search your heart. And if you find something in your heart that is not like God, Simply just type these two words on the screen. I repent. It's not as hard as we make it. Simply put it on the screen. Woo! I just feel an anointing in this atmosphere as we get ready to go into communion. Simply put that on the screen. God, I repent. I repent. It's not drawn out. It's not complicated. God, I repent. God, I'm sorry for what I may have done against you. And I'm sorry for what I may have done, God, against the people I say I love. I repent. And it's with that, that posture of repentance, let's go right into Holy Communion. Let's go right here. We're going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and uh, verse to verse 28. If you feel the anointing, just simply say, Apostle, I feel it too. Don't let me, don't let me be in here by myself. I, I know that it's Resurrection Sunday. I know I'm always excited about church, but do you all feel something extraordinary in this atmosphere? Just simply say, Apostle, I feel it too, so I won't be out here by my lonesome. Here it is. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Go ahead and take that bread or take that cracker, whatever you have in this moment. We understand that the bread represents his body. The bruising, come on here. The lashes, the whipping, come on here. Pulling out his flesh. Oh, God have mercy pulling out meat from his, I know this is a little bit too much for some of you, but, but some of you need a memory woo, of what Jesus Christ, our man God, did on Calvary's cross just for you and I. That bread represents his body. After the same matter, also, he took the cup. Go ahead and grab your cup, grab your, your juice, whatever you have. And when he has supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as oft as you as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me and go ahead and drink the drink your juice now and this juice represents the blood Woo! i'm gonna try not to get lost right here somebody say the blood god have mercy somebody say the blood god on this resurrection sunday Woo! god have mercy we are so grateful for the blood that you shed for us, God, on Calvary's cross, God. And I'm very intentional to say this. Thank you for the choice you made, Jesus. 
hallelujah, ah, the crucifixion and what you endured on the cross. Thank you for choosing me when I didn't even know how to choose myself. God, we are so thankful for your blood. <laughs> for it is the blood, hallelujah, that cleanses us. For it is the blood, hallelujah, <laughs> that gives us the opportunity. It is the blood that is the vehicle that allows us to experience perpetual redemption. Oh my God, perpetual redemption, all right? And so when it says, it says right here, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the blood, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Let, but let a man examine himself and let so him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 28. For you have taken part in Holy Communion. And y'all just excuse me. I'm so excited this morning just to kind of go into the word and, and, and really doing, you know, a, a Resurrection Sunday o, o, online. It, it's a little bit different for me, but I'm working with it. I'm working with it. I'm being patient. Yeah, I want to open up the doors of the church and God bless us with the building. And, and because of partners and because of members sewing, we've really gotten everything that we need. Uh, but I just thought this Resurrection Sunday, I wanted you all to be safe above my desire to have you gather. And that's just my heart desire. There's no knock against anyone who felt led of the Lord. I believe every shepherd, God will give instructions of what to do with their sheep, all right? And so let's just do what we have to do this morning. And I want to go right into the word. Can I keep the music going while I teach right through here? I want to teach in a very untraditional way this morning. I'm going to have this music going behind me, and I want you all to go grab your Bibles. I'm going to share with you some notes and some things that God has given me on this Resurrection Sunday. I pray that you all are enjoying yourself. Do me one last favor here. Go ahead and share. Go ahead and invite. If you have not pinged a few people, go grab some people and let them know, hey, you got to be in the worship room to hear this message. All right? Go ping some people. Share on, uh, subscribe on YouTube. Share on Facebook. And those of you who are in the portal, I appreciate your faithfulness in our portal on our website as well. All right? Let's go right into the word of the Lord. I want you, if you have your Bible, I want you to begin to open your Bible to the book of St. Luke. All right? And we're going to look at the cha uh, chapter 23. And I'm going to read verses 32 all the way to about verse 44. So we're going to do a little bit of reading here, but I believe that it's going to be a blessing to you. Preachers across the nation may be choosing to take a more traditional route with what they preach this morning. Some are preaching on the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and that's a very applicable message as well. Many people have had the argument, many theologians have had an argument concerning when he got up, when he went to the grave, how many days was he in there, what day did he get up. All I, all I really want to talk about this morning is because he got up, ooh, I can experience redemption. Because he got up, somebody say, because he got up, we can experience, come on here, redemption. It's, it's similar to Christmas. Many people say Christmas is not on December the 25th, and I agree. Come on, history proves that that's not true. But because that's not true, it does not mean that I'm not going to partake in the Savior of the world being born. And so sometimes let's not spend so much time focusing on the exact dates that we miss the purpose woo, that he came in the earth. All right. And so let's go right into this scripture. And again, I'm not taking a traditional approach this morning to resurrection messages. I'm going to teach what God has given me. And I believe that it's also going to allow us to celebrate this auspicious occasion known as Resurrection Sunday. All right. And so let's go right into the scripture. All right. Luke 23. And I'm going to read from the King James Version. We're going to start at verse 32. And there were also two other male factors. Somebody say two others. We'll make it make sense. Led with him to be put to death. And now we're talking about Jesus Christ, our man God, being on the cross, going through crucifixion here. Verse 33 says, And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there, hallelujah, oh my God, hallelujah, y'all excuse me, hallelujah, something happens when I read this, y'all pardon me, hallelujah. And when they were come to the place, which, called, which is called Calvary, they, there they crucified him. The male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And this is verse 33 of Luke 23. 
verse 34 says, and, and then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they, depart, and they parted his rament and cast lots. Verse 35, and the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, he saved others, let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen God. Verse 36. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. Verse 37. And saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. God have mercy. Verse 38. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew saying this is the king of the jews somebody simply say he is still my king all right let me come out of that so i don't get ahead of myself just type it on the screen he is still my king all right verse 39 says this and one of the male factors which was hanged railed on him saying if thou be christ hallelujah save thyself and us verse 40 but the other answering rebuked him saying Doest not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same con condemnation. Verse 41. And, and we indeed justly, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. Verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Verse 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Somebody say, Redemption while suffering. Aha. Uh -huh. Ooh. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. That man, that thief, come on here, that, the one that was accused, come on here. Jesus Christ, while, while he was in a place of suffering, also counted it not a robbery <laughs> while on Calvary's cross to allow one of the men that was there, hallelujah, to experience <laughs> redemption. All right, let me go back to the scripture, Luke 23, hallelujah, verse 44. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent, was rent in the midst, verse 46, and we're done here. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for that. Woo! Jesus, I thank you for that. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Somebody say, he gave up the ghost. I want to teach from the, from the subtopic while suffering. Oh, God have mercy. For we know that we are in a series this month titled Redeemed. This month, God is redeeming our hearts as only he can. Redeeming us from pain. Hallelujah. Redeeming us from suffering. Re redeeming us from the trauma that many of us have been held captive to as we think back to childhood experiences. As we think uh, about what COVID-19 has done all across the nation. I don't believe there is a person whose life has not been touched in some way by the pandemic or COVID-19. But I am so glad, hallelujah, that this entire month of April is about God reconstructing us, reconfiguring us, reconciling us, and resurrecting us only, whoa, somebody shout only, uh, so that he can redeem us. This is the month where God is redeeming leaders. This is the month where God is redeeming those who are in business endeavors. This is the month, hallelujah, Sharita, I feel my help coming in the room. This is the month where God is redeeming our administration. God is redeeming, God have mercy, children that are lost and by themselves. God is redeeming all across the nation, hallelujah, things that look dead. Oh my God. I want you to take a commercial break and simply type this on the screen. It only looks dead. Oh my God. Your relationship only looks dead. 
Your marriage only looks dead. Your career only looks dead. Hallelujah. Your mind may even make you feel like sometimes that you are a dead man or woman walking around. But I come to tell you this morning that when he got up, he also got up with all power in his hand. When he got off of that cross, hallelujah, in the spirit, and when he gave up the ghost, and when he made a decision to say, God, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Our redemption was in that moment. Over 2,000 years ago, our redemption was in Christ's decision to be our Passover lamb, to be the ultimate sacrifice. How do you sacrifice? We complain about headaches. We complain about bad relationships. We complain about people leaving our life without explaining why. <laughs> But the ultimate sacrifice that one could even go through, Jesus Christ is the only one who experienced that. And while he said in the scripture in Luke 22, he said, if it be thy will, can thou remove this cup from me? And I believe that he really could have made the decision for that moment to pass, but he suffered it for you and I. Had he not suffered on the cross, we're talking about our God. We're talking about our Savior this morning. I get a little lost when I talk about what Jesus did for you and I on Calvary's cross. While we had no memory, while we didn't have the ability, many of us were not even born. We weren't even a thought. Our generations had not even hit the earth. And there was a decision made on behalf of you and I for us to be redeemed. I want you to shout it again and go ahead and share and invite. I am redeemable. There is something that God can still do with my life. Can I talk this in, an, in a non-traditional way? There is still purpose for my life in my community. There is still something that I must do and nobody can do it like me. Woo! Nobody can do it like you. I understand if I say no, God will find somebody to give him a yes. But there are things in the earth woo, that cannot be done the way you can do them. Because when God redeems you, woo, he gives you strategy how to do your sin assignment. I am excited on this Resurrection Sunday. Can we talk about what the word redemption even means? The reason why I read this story is because I want you to see that even while Jesus Christ, our Savior, come on here, our Passover lamb, come on here, uh, the man God Jesus, our Savior, while suffering, he made a conscious decision to forgive one of the men that was on the, on the cross with him. Can we operate in redemption while we're suffering? Can we make a choice to extend mercy? And you cannot operate in redemption if your life is absent of mercy. Woo! If it is absent of grace. If it is absent, come on here, of you allowing some things to happen in your life that you don't understand, but you don't tuck tail and run. You deal with it, hallelujah. And you allow the spirit of mercy, woo, and you allow the spirit of grace. I just heard the Lord say this. I am redeeming marriages that some of you are getting ready to run out of. I am redeeming relationships with parents and children. I am redeeming relationships so that you don't walk past the door of opportunity that God has prepared for you. He's redeeming relationships this Sunday. Your relationship is redeemable. Woo! Hallelujah. Your mindset is redeemable. Your career is redeemable. Oh, I heard him say this too. Your health is redeemable. You shall not die of that disease. You shall not be on that medication all your life. Hallelujah. Somebody say it till you feel it. I am redeemable. There is still a purpose. There is still a plan for me. But I am fascinated with the text of Luke, where while Jesus is being crucified and getting prepared for crucifixion, and, and, and many authors say this a different way, I'm not here to debate what happened and when it happened first, when it happened last, the second, third, and fourth phases of this, I simply want you to understand through Luke that while our Savior was suffering, he made a, 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 a conscious decision that he would Forgive this man. And it's in 43. Luke 23 and 43 says, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was in that moment he made a decision to redeem that man. Here's my point, and I'm going to move on to some points and we're done. Will we, while we are suffering, 
while we are going through things we don't understand. We are all in a time of crisis. The world we knew, come on here, is gone. I will be, I believe that there will be a God normal that is established. But while we are all going through some form of crisis, how many times will we make a conscious decision to redeem someone? It is in this story that I am reminded that I need to make sure that I find opportunities. And here is your challenge this week. Each week, I'm gonna try to give you a challenge. Media team, help me remember to give a challenge each week. This week, I want you to find at least five opportunities to operate in redemptive power towards someone else. This is when things are not going well. This is when it hurts you to save somebody else. God have mercy. I want you to find this week, as we are celebrating Resurrection Sunday, I want you to look for five opportunities. That is one opportunity per day for you to operate in grace. Oh, God have mercy with your enemy. Uh-oh. This is five opportunities for you to operate, come on here, in mercy with someone who may post indirectly about you. You know it's about you. And then you still choose to say, I love you, and I still love you, and I still love you. Uh oh, I say it three times. I love you, I love you, and I still love you. Because sometimes we say, we love you, but. Can we, can we find five opportunities this week to say, I love you, I love you, and I love you. How can I serve? How can I still be in your life? Although it hurts being close. Uh-oh. Have you ever had to be close to someone? Woo! And it be and it be hurting you while you're close. But redemption reminds you that you were once like that too. Come on here. You used to do those things. You used to say those things. You used to have that mindset. See, redemption never allows you to forget your memory of who God redeemed you from being. It is only the spirit of religion that will cause you to believe that you're not like them. I don't do those kind of things no more. It is redemption. Woo! Say it on the screen. It is redemption that will allow you to remember that if you had not shared your blood, hallelujah, on Calvary's cross, I would still look like them. My life would be like theirs. I would think like them. I would go the places that they go. And so now, because I understand redemption, it is my responsibility to redeem as many people as possible. It is my responsibility, even while in the midst of a pandemic, to snatch as many souls that are on their way to hell out of hell's grip. Who have you, gri who have you grabbed? Out of the destruction of hell's, uh, out of hell's fierce, out of out of hell's fury in this season, who have you grabbed? In other words, who have you grabbed out of a path of destruction? It's uh uh. God, I got a purpose for you, man. God has a purpose for you, woman. No, 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 no. You're 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 on this earth for a greater cause. Challenge number two for this week. It's going to be your responsibility to allow the spirit of evangelism to flow through you. You don't have to be an evangelist to flow in the spirit of evangelism. Somebody say the spirit of evangelism. This week, I want to say this, but let me say it carefully. Do not mock this Resurrection Sunday by just enjoying your meal, enjoying your family, and then you don't strategize this week on how you're going to lead someone to Christ. Resurrection Sunday, here it is you all, Resurrection Sunday has everything to do with who you introduce to a redemptive savior. It is not just for you to go on an Easter egg hunt. I was nice about the bunny. I was nice about it because some of y'all still call it Easter. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm being nice this morning. It has nothing to do with a bunny or an egg. All right, I said I wasn't going to touch it. As we commemorate and as we honor Resurrection Sunday. It is your responsibility this week. Hallelujah. I won't touch that bunny and the egg, but I'm going to leave it alone, Prophet Tanisha. I'm going to leave the bunny and the egg alone, but I do want to touch it, but I'm not. It is your responsibility this week to find opportunities to lead people to Christ. Lead them to a redemptive God. Lead them to a path of redemption. Lead them to a place where, where they understand that, yeah, you were out there doing your thing. Yeah, you, you may have been in a club and you, you may have slept with five or six different men and, and they were married or, or you slept with married women. But on this day, somebody say today, hallelujah, today, somebody say today, somebody say today. I want you to understand that you have the opportunity in this moment to make a decision to operate in the same mercy and grace that our Savior operated on in 
while he was on Calvary's cross. Here it is. Redemption. And I want you to leave, I want to leave you with some definitions here. Redemption. Somebody shout redemption. This is the act of saving or being saved from sin, error, or evil. This is a simple working definition when you look up the word redemption. I believe we must have a clear understanding of what these words mean so we're not just throwing it around and, and having an incorrect perspective of what the word means. Redemption. This is the act of saving or being saved from sin. Somebody say we were saved from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Another working definition, and I'm going to repeat this later in my notes here, of redemption is the act of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment or clearing a debt. I'll read it again. Redemption, second definition. The act of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment or clearing a debt. Somebody say he cleared my debt. Hallelujah. Woo! He wiped my slate clean with his blood. Hallelujah. Come on here. Come on. I want you to get that in your spirit. He is clearing a debt so you cannot walk around allowing shame to run your life. You cannot walk around allowing the sins and the mistakes and the bloops and the blunders and how many years of your life you feel you wasted. What if I submitted to you this morning that you didn't waste it? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I submit to you that you didn't waste it because God is going to redeem time for you and the time you thought you wasted will only be your book. Where are my authors at? The time you thought you wasted, you'll put in your portfolio called life, you'll put it in your narrative and this will be how you help young men and young women across the nation because of the time you thought you wasted. He is a redeemer of time. The time that the canker worm stole, the time that the palmer worm stole, he is the redeemer of time. He will allow you to enter into a new place of purpose. And all the years you thought you wasted, the marriage you thought you wasted time in. Come on here. Relationships you thought you wasted time in. Come on here. Churches you thought you wasted time in. Careers you thought you wasted time in. Can I tell you that the time that you think you wasted was only him writing history with the pages of your life. He didn't do it because you chose it. Come on here. You wouldn't surrender. I wouldn't surrender. But can I tell you this morning that because of redemption, he is changing, he's changing the narrative because of redemptive power. When he redeems, he changes. <laughs> when he redeems, he changes. And come on. And I hear the Lord telling me to tell you that in this moment that he's rewriting the pages of your life. And the time you thought you wasted wasn't a waste at all. He will accelerate you after he redeems you. Oh my God. And when God touches your life and when God redeems you, he puts you in such a place with him that it will be like you didn't waste no time at all. But he'll put you in such a direction. Come on here. We talked about Thursday that he will incline our hearts. He'll position our hearts in the direction of heaven. When he redeems, he positions our life, our steps, our thoughts, come on here, and even our careers, to be walking in the direction of heaven. Somebody say, I'm walking towards heaven. These are supernatural steps. These are legislative steps that, steps that have been ordained by God for you to land right smack dab, we say that in the country, slap dab in the middle of your purpose. Woo! Your purpose is getting ready to look beautiful because you're getting ready to step into it in a newfound way. And so we understand that one of Jesus' main purposes in descending to the earth was to redeem his people. Don't forget that. One of Jesus' main purposes in descending to the earth was to redeem us as his people. Redemption, in a very simple way, is the act of gaining possession of something in exchange for a payment or a debt. I want you to hear this. Jesus Christ, our Savior, somebody say our Savior, suffered the penalty of, of, of the sins of all mankind on the cross. Here it is. So that those who believe in him would be reunited with him and the Father. What Jesus Christ suffered on Calvary's cross allows us to be reunited with the Father. Never forget that. Many describe this as the divine exchange. Many, many describe this type of redemption as the divine exchange. Somebody say the divine exchange. When we are, because of Jesus Christ's suffering, we now have the opportunity, here it is, to be reunited with the Father. This is divine exchange. To say this in a very simple way, 
Jesus takes everything that I am, hallelujah, ooh, just as I am, while I receive everything that he is. Jesus' death in exchange for my life is what I'm talking about. I'm going to read it again because if you really understand what this is, Jesus takes everything that we are, hallelujah, just as we are while receiving everything that he is. What kind of love is this? <laughs> Can love come into the conversation? It is only when we have a correct perspective, a correct uh, understanding of his love, that we are even able to comprehend and wrap our minds around this kind of redemption. Somebody say, he always loves me. Jesus always loves me. Come on here. And when we understand his love, we will understand that we didn't deserve, we don't deserve this, we cannot earn this, and because we can't earn it, and because we can't deserve it, we don't deserve it, it can never be taken away. You all, in other words, you always have the opportunity to be redeemed. Jesus' redemption grants us freedom from guilt, condemnation, and the shame of our sin. This morning, I come against all forms of shame, all forms of guilt, and all forms of condemnation. I take it from your heart. I take away the memory, or as, or as, or as, a, as a writer says, when, when, we, when we walk in forgiveness, and this is what we have to understand about God, when we walk in forgiveness, it is not that we forget about what we did or what was done to us. True forgiveness is when you remember it, but it don't hurt you no more. May God deliver us all from every form of shame, every form of guilt, and us beating ourselves up. Jesus' redemption, because we have to understand that it is Jesus' redemption that grants us into this new place. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus has seized our sin and taken it upon himself. Somebody said he has buried it. He buried it on the cross. And this is all sins, past, present, and future. So he seized our sin and he took it upon himself on Calvary's cross. Now this doesn't mean we walk in, 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 in habitual sin. Now we, we repent and we turn in the direction of heaven. And so we be, as we become more like God, as we step into the mantle or into the metron or into the grace of who he wants us to be, we don't take it for granted. You guys share and invite. You all are doing great here this morning. Share and invite no matter where you are. I'm almost done. We are made new creations in this day. On this day, we are made new creations, but you got to understand that you were made a new creation on the day you gave your life to Christ. You were made a new creation. Here it is. God only sees the righteousness of Jesus in us. See, it all depends on how we look at redemption. Some of you think about the mistakes you make. You think about how imperfect you are. You allow your insecurities to drown out all the good that you do. Who is that? You can do 10 things right, but you will harp on the one thing you do wrong. We, God only sees, when God looks at me, somebody say, when he looks at me, and we're closing, when he looks at me, he only sees the righteousness of Jesus in us. This is why we have to every day do our best to become more like him. We have to do our best. We're not going to be perfect, but we're gonna do everything we can do to be more like Jesus. And we become more like Jesus when we find as many opportunities as possible to operate in the redemptive power that we can only do with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Once the divine exchange is made, this guarantees you eternal security. Woo! Hallelujah. Somebody say eternal security. Once this divine exchange, him suffering, come on here, you receiving him as your savior. This is a great moment to give your life to Jesus, by the way. How, great insert. This is a great day and great time to give your life and heart to Jesus. And so because of the divine exchange, somebody say the divine exchange, this guarantees us eternal security. Jesus will never repossess his gift of salvation. He'll never take it back because you don't make your payments. I want y'all to hear this. <clears throat> Jesus will never repossess the gift of salvation, nor should we possess, repossess the guilt 
and the shame of sin for which Jesus has already suffered. So he doesn't repossess. He doesn't say, well, I gave it to you. Now I'm going to take it back because I want it back. Come on. He's not an Indian giver with salvation. The gift of redemption and the, and, no, salvation and redemption is a gift. I want you to write that in your notes. Salvation and redemption is God's gift to you and he does not repossess it. As he does not repossess it from us, don't you repossess the guilt, the shame, the doubt, the mistakes you made, whose life you ruined. Some of you may have committed abortion. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Once you repent, you let it go and it goes into the seat of forgetfulness. God has forgotten many of the things you still hold against yourself. Jesus' redemption grants us freedom from fear, worry, and anxiety. Jesus' redemption, and I want you to hear this, Jesus' redemption grants us freedom from seeking, um, from seeking to earn people's favor and it puts us in a place of desiring God's favor. Woo! Jesus, in other words, I'll say it this way. Jesus' redemption grants us freedom from seeking to earn uh, uh, the favor from people, but it puts us in a place of knowing that I gotta, I, if I'm going to earn anything, I'm going to earn things from God. Not because of works, but I'm going to earn it through my relationship with him. Here it is. Jesus' redemption also redeems us or grants us the freedom from seeking approval and acceptance from people. Here it is. Jesus' redemption, here it is, grants us freedom to, uh, it grants us the freedom to forgive and love our enemies and bless those who, who persecute us. Here is the last note and I'm done. Jesus' redemption grants us freedom to fail and still know that we are loved by God in a deep way. That's my concluding note. Because of this redemption that God is allowing us to experience on this Resurrection Sunday, you can get it wrong and still understand that he loves you so much. Somebody say, and he still loves me. I'm done. <clears throat> and he still loves me. And he still loves me. I want you to lift that and he still loves me. And he still loves me. I'm going to play this song that we started with as we go, get out of here. Somebody's saying, he still loves me. I want you to hear that. And he still loves me. He still loves me. And he still loves you. I pray that this message today on redemption has pulled you out of a place and then positioned you for a new place. Somebody say, a new place. I am so excited about what God is getting ready to do in our life this month just because of his grace and mercy. I want you to do me a favor. I know all throughout this message, you've seen us posting, call our prayer line. You, 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 you gotta understand that we have some powerful ministry leaders that are waiting right now in our worship room call center to take your ministry calls right now. If you need prayer, I want you to go call our 866 number right now. There are ministry leaders that are waiting to pray with you. Call our prayer center now. You may be a backslider. You may be in need of somebody to touch and agree with you. You may need somebody to help you better understand. You mean to tell me that God can still use me? There's still a purpose and plan for me? Absolutely. Call our ministry line right now. You also may say, you know what? I love what's going on here in the worship room. I want to become a member. If you want to become a worship room member, this is our church, whether it's an e-church side of it or the physical, Call our number and let and press the prompt for joining our church and, and let us shepherd your soul. All of us are in need of a shepherd. All of us need a pastor. I want you to call the number there. If you want to become a member and you've dated us for some time and you say, I don't need to call nobody, simply go to marcusrivers.org, click on connect, and just, just, just fill out the form right there for becoming an e-church member. The form is very simple. We'll get that form and one of our ministry leaders will call you, contact you, and walk you through the next steps. If you wanna become a member 
of the worship room. We're located in Lanham, Maryland. We're getting ready in the months ahead to open up services for our ministry team only, all right? But we're going to be having services so we can allow you to see the space. And I'm ready to run, jump, skip, and hop myself, if I'll be honest. I'm ready to have some church, all right? And so if you want to become a part of this amazing church called the worship room, call our line and, and, and just ask about it. Ask, what do I have to do? I'm just curious, all right? And so I want you to call the number now. Our, our prayer lines and our call center is open to about 12 o'clock today. And so make sure you call our prayer line so you can uh, get connected with us, all right? Last but not least, I want to invite you to salvation. If you want to give your heart and life to Christ, I want to invite you to give your heart and life to Christ. Do you need salvation is my question. What a great day to give your heart and life to Jesus. What a great time. What a great time for you to say, you know what? I want to understand this God of redemption. I made so many mistakes or I'm not, or I just, I've been wandering around life or I'm a backslider. I was in church, I got hurt and I walked away from it all. If you desire to give your life to Christ, our ministry leaders are waiting to connect with you, to connect, to reconnect you with God so that you could be all that he wants you to be, all right? Well, beloved, I love you. I'm out of time. I want you to join us in the morning on the Worship Room Prayer Line. Please join us in the morning, all right? We meet every Monday and Wednesday, Wednesday on our prayer line, all right? Every Monday and Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We sometimes stream it online um, on Facebook, um, but we always have the prayer line open. So if you are on our prayer line, you will always be able to participate in the prayer. So simply go to www.marcusrivers.org and there'll be a pop-up, give your name and your email, and you'll be given the opportunity to become a part of our 1,000 Intercessors Strong, where we pray every Monday and Wednesday morning, right? I love you. God bless you. You all have an amazing day. I pray that today you enjoy your family. Please don't treat this day like a regular day, whatever you do. Do something fun, but remember and honor what our Savior did around this time. We won't say this is the exact day I want to get in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an argument with a theologian, but we will say, let's make sure we honor this Resurrection Sunday in some way, form, or fashion. We're going to make sure that this week we find five ways, somebody say five ways, five ways to operate in redemption towards someone that we know or don't know. All right, we're gonna find those ways. And then we're gonna find an opportunity, one opportunity this week to lead someone to Christ, to, to, to introduce them to the God of redemption, power, forgiveness, and love. All right, I love you, God bless you, and I'll see you all um, this Thursday for our weekly 8 p.m. service. We're gonna go further into this series entitled Redemption. I love you. God bless you. Have an amazing Sunday and happy Resurrection Sunday. I love you. God bless you. And shalom.